and what have you understood what haven't you understood where are you struggling you know how's your plan so let me know so we can start from simple how are you feeling Anyone can just unmute or raise the hand. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so it's really like people are just waiting as it, so that they don't. So what what is hard? Is it is it just unmuting and speak just, or is it the you know it's kind of the kind of changing state from not speaking to speaking? You can type as well. Just you don't have to speak, but it, it you know just imagine just you are me and you want to interact as if you are in a physical space and you're seeing the eyes of the people and you're kind of sitting in a certain way and then you want to interact but you can't and so you really keep modeling what's going on what am i getting it wrong so i just want to know what is what is the challenge what is what is the yeah thanks matilda and didia but I just want to understand also this aspect, like, you know, what is hard if, you know, if I were you and if I don't speak, someone asks and you don't reply, you know, what's the process going on? Let's map it. Is that one is waiting, someone is, someone else will, will say it, so I don't. You know, there is there is a whole psychology about it. You know, in, in one of the books that I read, just it was actually they have been trying to test exactly similar area that in one point, so the incident that triggered the the ex research, the psychological research was someone was murdered in New York in a neighborhood where everyone, there were many people who were by the window and no one has called the police. And then that was a trigger because they said, okay, are people really heartless that they don't call when they see someone? And then ultimately, I think, you know, they, they understand a lot of it. People, if there is only one person in the event, that person will call. But if there are many people in the group, people believe or people think that okay the other person should call so they don't they're not gonna call so this delegation of responsibility basically becomes a lot more when you believe that you cannot be seen as an individual and do you think that is the case here why people just prefer silent Of course, I'm addressing the whole group. Daisy, yeah. Um, hi, everybody. First of all, sorry for the silence. Um, and yes, I think that may be a factor where uh, you find that, say, maybe this week's challenge is um, quite new. So there's quite a lot to um, understand. And uh, maybe let me speak for myself. There's the fear that you may not have gotten a content uh, uh, um, something quite clearly so that fear and shame that comes with uh, being wrong may hold you back from say and meeting your mic to speak um yes okay um, maybe i, I don't want to just only one person maybe rafa so so daisy say this but what i was asking was not about anything about a project i said how are you feeling so what what do you think why do you think people still prefer the same as whatever question I would have asked, people would say quite, would stay quite. Why do you, you know, why do you think is the reason? So, hi everyone and hi, hi everyone. 
yeah, I'm a bit asleep, you know, but yeah. After you just mentioned that story, I was just like, <laughs> that was too much. So, um, the thing that, I don't know for the others, but from my side, um, we used that to think the questions being asked in the first, uh, in the beginning of the class are just like, uh, are not being mentioned to, are not being, I mean, uh, addressed to, to being answered for, but rather to just like sometimes to, um, uh, to throw that question. And uh, also it's like, um, like, yeah, I mean, um, um, sometimes you, like uh, it's not delegating someone to just to speak, but rather I would say like, uh, um, it's, I don't see it as, as really, maybe that's how I see it, but it's not like really a question to be answered for it or something. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think that's the main thing. I mean, it is I, good, but but what I'm what I'm Jeremy, go on. No, go ahead. I, uh, I'm just uh, to report my progress about this. Yeah, week. no, I mean, what I am noticing is that it it doesn't matter. It is irrespective of the question that's being asked, at least from my side. When whether it's like, how are you? What's your name? Or what's your feeling? Or you know, how do you find the project? It's all the same. From my perspective, it seems there is like a preference for silence and then uh, kind of there's a friction. And then at some point it might get better, but there is a friction. There's people come mostly not expecting to speak per se or to hear. And usually that's what I will not do. I exactly act the opposite of people's expectation. If that expectation I feel is not the right way or not what I believe is helpful i mean for me like the only reason 10 academy works a little bit is because we try to make it active thinking that means active mind you know whether at in every team that i lead i would i don't care whether you are smart or not if you're not thinking active you are less likely to do what i'm wanting so for me you know contents are not that important as much sometimes Contents when the one you do is important, but your active hate is what we are paying for. Like if I'm a you know a, a CEO, like it's not for your kind of body that I, I I pay for. Sometimes I do if you are you know doing some non-critical work, like let's say cleaning. But if you if I ask you to develop something, it's active thinking, you know, and and that is what I'm paying for, and therefore. If people come in here to listen without active thinking, then I feel sure you might gain something. Of course, always you can gain even from walking in anywhere, but not the one that I'm looking. So that's why I'm much more interested in people coming here with a certain, let's say, if you didn't have coffee, have coffee. If you didn't have, I don't know, like if you were just in a day working alone, you know, kind of do push up or whatever you want so that you come here and say like, okay, just easy to to interact, easy to brainstorm, ask like, okay, what have I understand? What I don't understand? What's going on? Like, like if you do, if you do that, I feel that you grow. Like whatever we talk will be relevant. If not, it's the usual. It's kind of the slow process. And I I am really don't want to waste my time. Personally, I don't want to waste. I don't want to tell people what they what they should do. I mean, that's a principle. I know it's relevant in a university context that I know it's relevant in many contexts, but in my context, at least it's not relevant. I, I'm much more interested in the active reflection and active thinking and less of any passive knowledge. I, I don't care. Um, so that's why I'm much more critical in this, like, um, whether you are part of my team or whether I'm giving a tutorial or I'm leading a stand up. I just search for only active thinking and no one person. I mean, I'm talking too much, but I just want to put my, my thing. So, okay, Jeremy, you can go on from updates to anything. Okay. Um, for me, it takes me a little time to think what I have done. So that's why I go late to raise hand. 
um, regarding to my the project, uh, I worked on setting up the hard drive in trying to be continuing the it on Monday. Uh, on Tuesday, I study I, I study the requirements and list it out what I needed to know to move on to the to next phase while also learning the solid programming language. Okay, great. Anyone wants to from reflections to anything? Binium? Yeah, uh, I don't have much of a reflection, but uh, just to give you some uh, updates, uh, I, I was working on uh, trying to understand exactly how the Ethereum operates specifically. I, I didn't know exactly how data was being stored uh, from the background. Uh, I was yeah, struggling to understand exactly wh where the Merkle tree part of uh, the blockchain was uh, uh, integrated into the whole system uh, and how it was uh, working with the whole uh, uh, chain of the blocks uh, and so on. So I was trying to understand those. I managed to answer some of those questions, but uh, I was still struggling with some concepts. Uh, I don't know if it's the right place to ask right you now. See, it's, it, this is exactly like, you know, this is the most enriching thing that you said. Like, there is nothing else more than saying that. Like, I mean, in a way, you know, there is no knowledge that's expensive. There's only, there's only knowledge that is kind of, kind of reflected or being curious about being, you know, and I think that that's, that's it. That's, that's what's being sold in the market that's you read a lot of blog and it doesn't help you if you don't reflect like that so for me for example of all you know you said something very relevant why don't you give us a tutorial on that just for three minutes what you read again you can ask anywhere in, in any part that you are uncertain you can say like okay i need probably to check or i need some help but the parts that you understand <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, uh, what I managed to understand uh, is, uh, I understand that uh, the blockchain is somewhat different from Bitcoin in that uh, do you, it actually do you mind to open? Do you mind to open, like, to share your screen from one of the blog that, that helped you so that we see something oh. or maybe your face, you know, just so that it is not behind a wall, somebody talking? And usually not okay, that kind of I, thing I, after so that one can, 30 seconds. Maybe you can, can uh, for me to reopen this uh, uh, okay. meeting in my I, I will share. So share 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 you the, the link and then I can share. Actually I collect uh, I, I went through a lot of links and I collected some uh, of the concepts okay. in a Google Docs, so maybe uh, that would be great. Yeah, so Maybe until uh, I open, maybe yeah, some other I will, can read. I'll, uh, absolutely. Go, yeah. Anyone else? You can always, in my session, in everywhere, you can always say, if I ask you something, you can say pass. And that means nothing. Okay, good. You don't want to think or you need time. So, so I will not put you, I will not grill you at that spot. Meron. So I just, I just don't want to unmute and say pass, but uh, this week uh, I'm not, I'm not doing uh, really that much good. So I didn't have much of a uh, progress. Let's, before. let's zoom in. Let's zoom in in why, why do you think that is? Yeah. So basically uh, on Monday and Tuesday, I wasn't feeling uh, well. I was a bit under the weather. That's one of the main reasons. But so yesterday was was basically I tried to read the challenge documents and try to go through some of the stuff. And today I'm also trying to read. So I haven't done anything that's tangible yet. That's why I Great. Read. But let's again let's again zoom in. You know, you know, as I said, knowledge is very, very cheap. So mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, wait to buy it or you know, accumulate time to know it. Let's just look at the dots that you already collected. So what are the pieces that you have and what are the pieces that are not making sense or that basically you don't even under, you know, you kind of didn't even read anything because of the time. So let's just start from any dot that is in your head. 
and so, the, the dots that are connected and the dots that are just there uh, without connection. Yeah, so basically as what I have understand as a concept is that uh, what we are intended to do for the project, I have gotten that down, will be working on our friend uh, mobile app, a D app uh, that will uh, based on this, uh, we'll be building a smart contract that will uh, the based on the user's location if they are at a, a specific geographical area for a specific duration it will be detecting that so i have understood the challenge uh, that far and as for ethereum blockchain uh, some of the previous uh, knowledge uh, i was able to understand from the algorithm has helped me uh, you know, I have right, basic yeah. understanding of cryptography and everything, and Ethereum is somewhat similar. It's basically the mm -hmm. same. I, I see that it starts with a genesis state, just like the algorand. Yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm and I, I, I know that it has accounts, and there are two types of accounts. Uh, there's like an external owned account and a contract account. Uh, uh, and the difference is that external owned account has private keys and the contract uh, contracts basically have code and that's how they are they basically operate so i think that's where i am so i mean far. so that means you know you understand a lot more than you think in the beginning you, you summarized again now a lot of dots are connected now let's mm -hmm. just go a little bit further let's mm -hmm. visualize the final product that you're gonna deliver, okay? So, okay. and now let's just imagine, let's go back. What has, what, which component does it have? And which parts that you think is gonna be slightly difficult? So start from the end and just go back. And then what are missing? What dots are there? What dots are missing? And what relationship between dots are there and what relationships are missing? Yeah, I think uh, for what's missing would be... Uh, Let, let's start the, though from the end. What would be the elements like that that you would be delivering, you know, a successful delivery? What does it, what will it have? So basically it will be an, a DApp uh, decentralized application. It will be a mobile application and it will need to uh, read on, it will have a smart contract and it will be able to detect the geographical location yeah. of the universe. Okay, maybe just let me stop you just so that it, great, I think that's correct, but I want it to be explicit. So when you say, you know, DApp, like, I just want you to specify one or two properties of it, you know, what's different from a normal thing. For example, when you say mobile app and detect, detect is one, you know, a very vague word, right? But what mm -hmm. does it mean it detects? So make it slightly explicit, one or two properties in each of important keywords. Okay. So the mobile application yes. must uh, must uh, read the user's location, geographical location, where the user is at. Okay. And we have to figure out a way it could uh, receive uh, the user's location from the user's mobile app when using the application and okay. there there needs to be a monitoring situation as well on the other end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so that means it will basically because gps is a sensor that yeah. the gps module in a mobile will just um, somehow is generating without for you know location is active and the mobile app basically reads that one and sends so what does it so what are the other pieces that you will deliver so you you have now a code Let's call it a code. It's a mobile, mm -hmm. of course, that does that, that receives. And then what does it do afterwards? So like, so you have, you have mentioned the mobile app, the smart contract, um, and what else? Yeah. So what, how, do, how, how are they related? So how they're related and also there's the payment part where that mm -hmm. if, if according to the smart contract, if the, you, if the user location remains at that uh, at that place for a certain duration there will be a funding process so that's another aspect we need to figure out as well so that means it's part of your code in your delivery that that shows that right yeah so and where does it so this check and balance where does it happen is it in the front end in the back end 
So by backend, let's say that's because that's the smart contract. Yeah, I think the backend, the okay. checking part will be on the backend and the reading geographical and stuff will be on the front end, I imagine. Okay. And what does the front end need to communicate with the back end? So, so there are two communications the front end or the app does, right? One yeah. is to read, to receive information or message from the sensor, GPS yeah. sensor, and the other one. So it's a relay, right? Yeah. That basically, okay. So what do you expect the code of the smart contract looks like? I think the code would have the front end code would have to design the, the basic UI for like turning on location and maybe receiving payment, accepting payment. Mm -hmm. And on the other end, for the monitoring part, it should have a UI where they can see users and their location and how long they stayed in that place. I'm just trying to imagine it. Exactly. Uh, it, we're imagining the end, right? The submission. Yeah. Okay. And yes. what is the component of the backend or the smart contract you think it will have? How many functions do you think it will have? Uh, I am not sure, but it should have a function that does the checking, uh, geographical location, uh, the payment part to make payment. Uh, what else? Uh, maybe check duration. So we would have we need to have fun different functions that does that good so now how do you feel i feel like uh we planned uh, i feel like i have a, a vivid like sort of imagination of what it would be like so yeah. thank you for so that no just think no no it's okay it's it's really it's okay. sometimes beyond what you think you know so it's about articulating it and that's why it's really useful at every chance to talk to okay. try to explain it because you have the information most of the time, but you never proved to yourself that. And only when you speak it sometimes, or when you write it, or when you do something, act, active engagement that you actually know how much you know and how much you don't know. So like now go back now, just, and then put the, the dots and then figure out which dots actually are missing and uh, which dots you don't have clear idea, you know, uh, on how to do it or conceptually what, what you understand. Okay. Okay. And then at the end of this, we will again, just go back and check. Okay. So then I will come to you, Biniam, but let's just go through to a few people just in the same expect right now. There are many things you can say, whatever you feel, but exactly. You could also go back to the end project that you will submit on Saturday. And for some people, pro we will extend it. Um, if you are, if you know, optionally, if you want to next week also to take this same project to develop it further, you can. So that's what we will do next. The uh, next two weeks will allow people to specialize, you know, to work more also on, on a project. We'll give more projects, and then we ask people to choose and continue some of the things or do new projects. So, um, okay. So I, I don't know the order. I think I've seen my, um, earlier Dagmawi and there was Ariz Abel and there's Tetus and Martin. So let's just go to Abel. If the, uh, so the order is uh, Titus. I don't know which one is kind of first to last. Okay, yeah. This first is Martin. Go on, Martin. Oh, yeah. Uh, so... <clears throat> Okay, thank you for the opportunity. I think uh, there are many things that I've learned uh, so far. And, and I, I was just sharing in the morning that if you just follow up on the links that were shared, uh, you'll actually get to learn, you'll get to learn a lot. So uh, for me, what I, yes? No, no, it's okay. Just um, the background noise, go on. And, and just go on giving us some kind of, components that you're, you know, that are dots that, that are in your head, that are clear, mm. dots mm. that are kind of related, and so everything is okay. And then dots mm. that are kind of not, you know, but they're not related to the main body of mm. your knowledge. And then dots you think are missing or somehow that, that you need to figure out. 
Okay, uh, so <clears throat> I think uh, first of all, I'll, I'll say thoughts that I've been able to like uh, figure out or understand and concerning the Ethereum blockchain. So what I was looking at for this particular project that you are given for uh, tra re refunding somebody according to the location and all that. And so what I was thinking was like this, that you are, you first of all, initialize by uh, getting uh, a number of, you want to collect a number of things like where is the person? Uh, another thing you'll want to collect. So this I'm, I'm speaking about just variables in de declaring and initializing of those particular variables. So first of all, you'll want to know where that person is. Uh, then secondly, you'll want to know the, of course, the, 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 the value of the amount that the employer is supposed to pay the employee. Then you need to have the addresses for the two people are the addresses for the employee and the employer Martin, great yes. because you are doing that and it's it's useful and it's exactly the the you know the point of the tutorial can you probably think also how that could be defined in solidity for example if it is a num or an array you know or if it is an integer or something just just so that it, it gets directly to the heart of the problem okay so uh... what do you expect i mean it doesn't, it doesn't have to be correct but what do you expect it to be? So I'll expect, I, I don't know. I, I think for me, I'll find it easier if I will share screen and maybe. Uh, I think you can, you should share, but make sure just to not go too detail. Just, I want okay. only dots. Okay. Let me share. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so, first of all, you'll just uh, initialize your contract, like maybe you say geo. Uh, for me, I call mine geo funding, and then I'll, I'll, I'll now. I, I'm not. I'm not like trying to be as accurate as possible, but just yeah. dots. Yeah. So first of all, I'll get the address of the particular uh, of the employer. Uh, so I'll get the address of the employer. Then the next thing, I'll get the address of the of the employee. Then after getting the address of the employee, I'll get the location. The location I can use a uh, struct for this particular case, and I can say a uh, geolocation, and then I'm I'm thinking of it like a uh, geojson, so like it can have the longitude, and then uh, it can be maybe the the longitude, and then the latitude. Uh, then after I get the particular geolocation, uh, I store it. Uh, yeah, I, I can, uh, I can, I can, I can, I can now create an instance, like, for example, I'll say, uh, geolocation, location, uh, like, we'll do this, uh, geolocation, like, this could be the, sorry, I could create an array, so that in case I want to get the array, let's say uh, geolocation, I'll, I'll, I'll like, what I'm just saying is I'll just get it to be an array first of all. And then once I get the location, I'll get now the amount, amount uh, that we are doing the transaction about. And then I think basically this is just what you want to do. So I'll first, I'll, I'll create a function like get location that's the first function I'll create. Uh, maybe it could be a public. And then uh, the second create function that I'll create is uh, get amount. And this will be from the from the employee, from the employer, uh, from the employer. Then the other function that I can create is uh, get, what else? Now I can now set the amount 
and then uh, then I'll, 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 I'll do that then I'll also do another function for a uh, check location and then I'll do that then I'll do another function for uh, yeah that is, that is to verify verify or we can call even this and just compliance whether the, the the particular individual is in within that particular area then after that uh, after verifying that he is complying then I will award so now I'll award so basically this is how I'll, I'll look at it then uh, when now I've, I've maybe I've, 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 I've come here I'll I'll, I'll now get uh, the location through maybe uh, geolocation. Uh, so here it's it's just passing like a, a U int of the maybe the latitude and then uh, a U int of maybe the longitude and then uh, now you create a geojson or something of that sort then I, i'm sure there are some libraries that will uh, sort of like work this out then getting the employer i think this is just uh, getting uh, the the amount then uh, i think once i get the amount i'll just store the amount uh, okay. over, over there then uh, I'll, I'll also set the amount that the employer wishes to depart with and then I'll, I'll check this compliance. Let, let, like, let me ask you now, just okay, the dots, great, right? So these are the dots, right? So, but now from the functionality perspective, there are like, there are conceptual as well as also technical, right? So now yeah. within these points, somebody, it's interacting, right? So it's basically someone is you are putting it public right mm. and you are putting it public you oh, know why yeah. do you want it public versus so have you looked into or have you checked for yeah. example, whether something oh, is, uh, sorry yeah. mm -hmm. sorry about that uh the this one actually uh there are some the ones that i will want to be public is the one that um i want everybody to be like anybody can be able to access it that is even though I, an attacker was to come in and hit that particular function that's okay but then uh for the the ones that are private is like these ones that uh, involve uh, issues like money because this one yeah yeah but, but it's okay let's let's you know it's, again these are dots right so i i just want but for example how many things do you have there so you're right there is private there is public and then what else do you know uh also you can make uh you can make it to be uh a pure, pure. and then it returns the maybe returns. the value okay okay yeah great so and and another one is called external so now when so this is much more of dots another type of dots another type of dots is that of course in the language there are mm. things are computed from a perspective of security and from a perspective mm -hmm. of actually how much computation so now what is so like i will i'll come to it just to, we'll pause there but there is for example a very big difference when something is private versus public how mm -hmm. actually uh, in memory, how storage are read and how storage are. For example, if something is private, then it is by location. So it's basically um, you you are kind of pointers you're using. So that means there's no reading and writing. If it is public, mm. because it's public means it can be read both from the when you know from internal. So another function, for example, if you make get location now public then that git mm. location can be read from external as well as internal. But yeah. if that location, if that one, for example, is external, then it mm -hmm. can only be called from external, but not internal. But that has a huge implication in terms of secu security, like in terms of like no more than security, it's in terms of cost, because one mm -hmm. would be, you are writing the internal the arguments, for example, mm -hmm. you int lat and you int long, Imagine if those instead of you in they are arrays and a lot, for example, let's say uh, 10 people from your company are going for a conference and you want to add 10 of them. And in that mm -hmm. case, you know, like then you are writing and reading 
a number of basically an array and you would mm -hmm. basically because if it's public that means you really uh, need to write uh, or the you know the evm or the virtual machine needs to write everything at at first in the memory that costs a lot more than for example if it was external if you know get location can only be called from external or internal then you should make it internal if you know get location is actually called from internal only internal is the mm -hmm. cheapest so basically you don't pay at all from storage because everything you it expects it's already written in storage things like that is one dot you know it's kind of from mm -hmm. when when we come to security plus uh, also expensive or not but then another one why do you why do you care why do you need to get get location what does it supposed to do the, the who's calling it the get location who's 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 calling it so, so you know like this one uh this one it's just uh for no, no, no. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll add the like, data who's, who's gonna use it oh the, the, this get location yeah. it's the one that Wait. i'm going to use to award like uh sorry yeah, i mean it's the one that i'm going to it? it's it's this one this one so uh, you want to get the location so that you can see whether he's compliant, that is within the boundaries, because here you can now uh, pass you know? like maybe a boundary. And then now- yeah. uh, But how do you know? What, what is get location? From where now, is it gonna get? Now for this one, you'll, it, it will use a, a library in, in JavaScript. Uh, to do what? The, now to get there's there's a library in javascript uh like the map box yeah, but to do what it's just the getting the location of that particular employee but how does it know this is living in a blockchain this is a smart contract right no that one will be done that one will be done in the javascript side not on the solidity part this one is just to store the information on the blockchain Okay, so this is you are writing the front end, not, but that's okay. So this is so, the, so it, the the kind of web app or mobile app. Yeah, so like like for, for example, like this one, this one it's uh it's the solidity code. But then on the JavaScript side is where we are going to now. Uh, like if if you are now now assuming like now I've stopped uh, programming in maybe a uh, solidity now over here I'm programming. So let, let me stop you. Yeah, exactly. Like do that and then split that code like what you write because you said contract contract is basically a solidity thing right yeah so that's why i'm a bit confused split it into two now one that is going to be in the front end one that will be staying in the back end yeah so now like for example this uh i'll 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 i'll, I'll, I'll get the location via the via the the the, the, the javascript that's the front so end. call it front end and back end so i just want it to be the dots to be clear so the dot i think it's, you're really doing well so you know i'm not greeting you you're doing well so i'm just kind of moving it so that people can understand anyone can ask as well right you know interact so now split what is going to be in the piece like in the front end and which is the mobile app web app and then what is going to be in the back end which is in the solidity basically in the smart mm -hmm. contract so split them. Okay. I'll I'll split this and then I'll put it inside the front end to get the location. Now this is just for yeah. getting the location. Absolutely. But now, yeah. So once I get the location using maybe like Mapbox.js or I use uh, whichever library that I'll I'll go with, and you, then you don't uh, need all that library. If it's in a mobile app, you get it just because it's a sensor. So you just get it from the sensor. So you no, no need from anything. You, basically, the sensor, like you know, Android, it gives you exactly what the sensor values are. You know, you just can't connect a library in in app oh. building. You can get that. So it's not about location from the, you know, from mm -hmm. whatever. You just get it from the sensor, the sensor reading. All right, uh, but if it's a web app now, uh... <clears throat> the web app you don't need to get location. Because web app, yeah. I mean, if it's oh, a web app, you're right. But again, still, you can use, yeah. Okay, if it's a web app, you're right. Maybe you can use those ones. But let's imagine it's, yeah. You have a, a wrapper. You're right. The library that basically the phones, the phone. I think normally it's like Android can give you like if it's a, an app, and you can actually get the location if the permission allows you. 
right? So, but mm -hmm. that's good. That's why I like the point. Instead of the detail, I like just as a dot. There is a way mm -hmm. you should get the location. It's just, uh, but it's not, it's not the inputs are not latitude and longitude. The inputs should just be something. It's the output. Actually, it's the return in that sense, right? Okay. Yeah, it, it sure it's, it's what is going to be returned. Okay. Like in okay. a GeoJSON format. Ex whatever, just call it latitude and longitude. That's sufficient. Mm -hmm. If you want, of course, from the barometer, you can get the altitude. Uh, yeah. So or, you have uh, a number of you have a number of ways from a sensor to get, you know. So mm -hmm. GPS only gives you latitude and longitude, so you can always just assume it as a two like variable. But then if you want actually the location at which floor of the you know, at which floor the person is in the hotel, then mm -hmm. in that case you can get the barometer, which measures pressure, which then translates into height which translates into basically you know at which floor you can be more likely so that one you can get it from a barometer so you know the sensors you can read so let's imagine there's a library that would give you conveniently yeah. those things okay yeah. and and okay i think this is great so let's stop it here because then i want to continue but this is this is what i'm so the dots you have i think the, the pieces that i want you to be clear is of course to separate them what would be in the um, in the back end in the contract and what would be in the front end but we are starting it we will go but does anyone have question with this currently what martin is displaying titus is it a question or do you want to also you, you you want to reflect it on on it oh okay yeah just, mine is just uh, is also a reflection a reflection okay. Of question. Yeah. okay great so let me come to you but thanks martin that was excellent okay. And I hope okay. this it helped people to get some of the dots. But then let's continue to um, to you, Titus, and then Abel, and then and then we also just have Biniam waiting to give us the okay, conceptual elements. Yeah, go. On. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, uh, thank you for the opportunity, and also Martin. Yeah, that was that was good. So, uh, yeah, from my side, I also just give a, a, a broad overview of what I've understood or what I'm supposed to to do. So, like from what I understood, uh, the contract is just uh, is basically the smart contract is just basically just uh, a piece of code that is deployed in the blockchain that can be like accessed uh, by through transactions, maybe to run that particular code. So, from uh, this uh, task or this project, I pictured the, it this way. Um, so, the the, the employer, uh, the, I, I as the developer, would have to create write that code that uh, would allow that particular employer to basically just, first of all, uh, have some funds in the, in the, like, be able to have the funds transferred to that particular uh, smart contract, basically, I think, for, for storage, so that, um, uh, because that, that's a transaction, so, like, he'll have that particular amount that he wants to have to send it to the, to the employee, and also the gas fees that are required for, for the, that particular transaction. So like basically the transaction will take that as, as an input to, to like run. Uh, so uh, um, after that, we will just go to the, to the employee. I have like three, three, basically three entities, like the employer, the employee, and that particular smart contract that uh, I have developed for and put into the, into the blockchain. So like um, the employee, uh, this is how I, I figured it out. I like I imagined it. Uh, this particular employee will like require to th th sending the GPS or the location. Uh, that in itself is a transaction. So like um, I was wondering like um, is, will he like be each time like at that particular period will will he like at this particular after this particular duration send signal? That that in itself is a transaction. That's very good, Titus. That's okay. really the heart, right? Okay. So okay. I think the very first thing that I wanted to zoom so that everyone uh, you know notices is that exactly that's a transaction, right? So, so that means the person, that means the employee needs to basically make transaction. Now, on behalf of the the person, what we have called is a device, the mobile, right? And the mobile basically at a certain regular time, that's basically call it a cron type style that it checks the time and if it is on the agreed time it basically of course that agreed time can be a random generated time right so it, so that the person even doesn't know a priori 
uh, for for the kind of like you know to make the application even more interesting. But at that particular, let's say three times during the day and three times during the night, right? And oh. it basically sends a transaction, and that device must have a private key because that device must have an account, right? That account is an external account because only external accounts start transaction. So basically the device must have a private key associated to it. And that's basically the person, like the employee, installs whatever in their account, in their mobile, and then they will basically send the device uh, public key to the employer who adds basically into this smart contract also that the smart contract must receive you know some transaction from is or, or this device is allowed to make transaction basically that transaction as you say it is to send gps coordinates to it and for these smart contracts to basically accordingly knowing that this is the device associated to somebody to some public address that's allowed to basically then check for that also a priority the employee has of course put some region and in some condition a range and that to check if it is fulfilled if it is fulfilled the state the status of this person is basically becomes or the compliance is called comp, you know compliant that means the person is still hasn't broken their contract so anytime this thing is kind of not broke broken of course the state will change how the state changes is again our part right in the smart contract do we tolerate so we can say like the counter of the state so for example okay this compliance is broken number one compliance is broken number two and compliance is broken probably you know you can accumulate the number of times the compliance is broken and and the number basically that and then if it reaches some amount then the final status can be changed to be compliance is not um so but the good thing what you just said and the dot one dot is that it's a message the device or the employee is sending a message or that is a transaction okay continue okay so um from uh, from the employee side um this is how i figured like this how it's supposed to like after creating after having this particular account uh maybe he should have this particular fields the, the 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 amount the employee amount that maybe the employee is supposed to be funded and uh the amount that is supposed to be used for as a that that's how like ethereum works the transaction fee and also like the amount that will be sent to the employee once like he's compliant with the requirements that have written that have been written in the smart contract so basically he'll have the employee public key the public key of the employee uh he'll have uh the amount to send to the employee plus the fuel and also like just to sign in yeah because he's using his account he'll have that this particular so, private key so yeah, um, the device the device oh, is signing so oh, basically oh okay 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 so it's so basically mm -hmm. okay well, okay so uh basically th those are the requirements that the, this particular employer needs to have from his side uh the smart contract now uh is supposed to like uh not specifically fetch but it's supposed to be triggered by this particular the device from the employee's side so like i was like wondering like um if if the the, the, the employee uh, also needs some uh al or not algo needs some ether in uh, his or her account to make the transactions so um from this point of view maybe the, this his account should be loaded with some particular amount a particular amount of sure. ether to make the transaction throughout the period that you will be required to do because this is a transaction itself it costs money it, like it's it costs the ethers for the computation to be done so like it also the, in the smart contract uh the the amount the, the the amount that has been i don't know if it's possible for the amount that has been used by the by the uh by the transactions made by because this at this particular intervals this employer is using a particular amount of ethers. So this amount that uh, that has been consumed, maybe it should be computed such that once uh, this particular, um, uh, the period that uh, the, the contract is required to run, maybe for the employee, maybe he's somewhere, he's required to be there for like two days. In this particular two days, the amount that he, is, he has consumed is supposed to be refunded plus the amount that is supposed to be paid. So like there sure. should be a way whereby um, 
the, this particular, the employer should be able to cut up for that, should be able to cut up for the amount that the employer, because this, this is not what he's supposed like, he's there for- I understand, I understand. So those are dots, right? Great. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. think you're right, uh, you know, but let's, that's called complexities. One oh. actually have to take care. So, you know, just if you want to know what would be the next project for this is that we are not going to run it like in an actual project, for example, in batch six, we'll probably then develop a blockchain, our own blockchain, where this thing is running. And basically that the employer, the nodes will be in the employer and in, you know, here and there, but it's not going to be running like in the actual uh, thing. Just that's one possibility that basically it's not a public blockchain uh, per se, like for a certain part of it, because only the, the, only the people involved in it or the, the parties that are involved in it are care about these things. But of course, in a public blockchain like Ethereum, if you want to run it, absolutely. Every transaction costs. So of course the person in the beginning should have, and that means the employer in this case, for all its employees must give Ethereum, let's imagine at the beginning, so that at least they have enough Ethereum to do all these kind of transactions. But let's call that one as, as kind of complexities, higher complexities that one can think. So I wouldn't want you to think too much about that at the moment. I would want you to think about, okay, I have understood these pieces. So now when I'm going to implementation, writing as Martin was earlier saying, what are the pieces like what is am i going to use for loops if loops like what am i gonna like so what is the differences between if i make it public private external uh, do i make these variables where is the storage earlier like binium was considering that you know but the evm i'm sure by now you understand what how it does right and so you should be like thinking about what should i be testing as well so it's kind of like, what is the variable? Am I using the init? So if it's longitude and latitude are fractions, what am I gonna do, convert them? So those are kind of, again, dots, but it's kind of programming language, you know? So how am I, what number of functions am I gonna have? What am I gonna expose? And how am I gonna, you know, what libraries am I gonna use? Am I gonna use some of the open Zeppelin uh, kind of libraries? Am I gonna get that? So that those are dots. I think you have understood them, that's great. So now you should just think in terms of also code elements, not only just concepts, but also code elements that's saying function, variables, the type of the variables, and how many do I need? Should I make them structure? Should I, should I make them array? Should I make them a map? Um, and, and because you need some kind of mapping as well, because there will be a number of people that are kind of being monitored by the same smart contract. So. I want you to start thinking also within that kind of terminology, okay? But that's great in terms of the concept. That's good and the, really this, this, the important part is also that it's transaction the device is sending to the smart contract. And that's what makes it actually the mobile app, the D app or the web app, the D app because it's connecting um, and doing either reading. So that means it either needs a node or both a node plus transaction. So a node to read the stats, the status, and and that is only just if you are exposing for kind of exploration for the admin. But if you if if both the admin needs to act, for example, to transfer some money or to start the, to initiate, then even the admin from a web app should is doing some kind of transaction, right? And that's what makes it the web app, you know, the app as well as also the mobile application, uh, mobile the app. Okay, okay. Great. So let's go to Abel and then let's go back to, um, um, so let's make it smaller now and let's talk now in terminologies of now code. Okay. It's just in term terminologies of functions, variables, uh, and security and tests and, um, as well as also computation, computer, compute cycles. So Abel, do you want to say something? Okay. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, I just have one question before. The, yeah. Uh, for the for the mobile data, is it just uh, an automatic data collection without any engagement with the user, or does it need a user engagement, like touching it to activate it, or something? Um, 
again it is up to you so for example earlier i don't know on monday or something someone suggested or so you could basically for extra care for extra uh, monitoring once in a while randomly the the let's say during the day you have three um, applications that you're sending right or three exchange three messages or three updates of location during the night the same now you may require two of them to be randomly kind of ask the person before before signing the app for example just rings or the app basically just like vibrates so that the person can actually i don't know swipe right so when they swipe basically this is sent so that kind of interaction is mostly for you to be able to make sure that the mobile is with that person so in that sense you can actually add that element but at this point again we always simplify to start with it's just the mobile app basically randomly generates something and when it the number match something it sends like you know it generates let's say between 1 and 24 and then at some time when you know based on a condition such that during the day it's 3 during the night it's 3 for example and it sends automatically without the person's awareness okay. and in the pieces so in the code in the are you reading is is now programming in solidity are you getting familiar have you looked at it yeah i mean i got some insights uh, for the procedures i think uh, i think first we have to make before coding in so i think first we have to make a state machine yeah. uh, so that all the rules can connect uh, we might we might have uh, four states for the project like um, out of compliance geolocation payments uh, uh, like three, uh, like three status in design. Uh, we will, we will also have uh, uh, other state like geolocation, longitude and latitude data, and we will connect these four uh, states with the geolocation, uh, returning back to its state for yeah. all the four status to ingest the data. That we get from the GPS. So, yeah. using so some... are you are you also thinking about how to store? Let's imagine you have now hundred people. So, are you thinking how to make it? Like, do you have an idea? You know how to take care of. You know, hundred people doing the same thing. In one smart blockchain. No, I didn't get that. I didn't get through that, but. I just... yeah. so that's what's kind of like you know you have now mapping so address to for example um compliance right and then address to uh, so that's why I, I i actually gave you explicitly the number baiting app you know number baiting it has exactly the you know if you look at the 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 solidity code it has the component that we need so that basically has okay you know n number of people bait right it's the same as like n number of device sending their location and then the location basically n number of them have of course a status that basically means another map which is addressed to for example their compliance right and then basically all of them and then it's a time thing so of course you can have a, a compliance in counter so per each person so that means again it's a map between an address and a compliance number and and then basically you might actually have that exactly that one can be one right so basically if it is more than one that means the person is basically uh it's called compliance non-compliance counter let's call it and the non-compliance counter basically counts all the every time that there is compliance is broken or there's an uh, non-compliance then the counter increases one and basically it can be a structure as well which has like in itself an an integer the counter plus the timestamp so that you know for future and this is basically could be in in storage and therefore every person has like now at every time that their state of compliance is described by this and and then of course completion as well it's like so and it, it can be like whether the period is done, so completed. 
so those kind of things now you have to start thinking because that that they are important for your um, you know because we we want multiple people to interact or multiple people to send to this smart contract and their state must be at every time be kept such that then when the and each person must have also their own uh, period right so that basically means the range of time and the range of um, coordinates so basically and uh, as soon as the range is finished then you know automatically for that person asynchronously a refund can happen and after that you can i mean if you want to remove that person you can actually remove that data into let's say um, an external ipfs just so that you save some kind of you free some kind of uh, ethereum but all that i want you to start thinking exactly that quarter does that make sense yes but uh, that does the counter specifies each engaged user exactly i mean so basically whatever is allowed so in the counter basically you you now have the person can add so there must be of course in the in your solidity code there there should be a public function that the the employer or the admin uh should should do that means they add right so they add a person and when they add a person they also add the range and they also add the time the time limit right and then also the amount they basically can get refunded so all of those data is associated to an address and now the that address anyone that is added can interact with a public function with another called that basically the, the device so their device will just basically send when the device sends of course if that device address is within the address that admin adds then it basically counts in their storage it counts like you know whatever and then compliance is computed whatever and then ultimately depending on what happens you know how the smart contract the logic defined when the time is completed either they get basically uh you know you activate something another contract for example that sends email or something you know that you are refunded or so you can also split it as basically the refunder the one that actually refunds money to be another smart contract that's activated as soon as the time time is up right or you know of course partial refund you can you can allow so that complexity again is just in your logic and how many contracts you create is also up to your complexity but for now simplicity you can do all of them in one solidity and and that's possible yeah does that make sense yes yes thank you thank you great jeremy uh, i have a question with the term uh, refund why do we say refund? i mean isn't the employer paying the employee no be i mean in principle because we are not paying them a priori that basically are paying them afterwards so a person went let's say to a hotel and that they stayed in that hotel or to a country you know a city they stayed in that hotel or in that region and they basically the contract can only refund after the compliance is uh, finished right or after they are compliant to the contract so because the money is paid post spent so it's not actually paying it to the hotel because the you know it's it's that's what's called refund okay uh and uh, another question uh, how are we going to interact with the employer account do we have to make uh, the user signing to, how are we going to interact with the employee account uh, the employer is also another, user signing? another yeah another basically web app uh, web d app web d app if you because you don't need the mobile to be so you can just it's a mobile exactly it's a web app that basically adds you, you give it the functionality earlier i said it adds who's you know all those things the geography region the time limit the amount that the person ultimately will 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 get accordingly the total amount and all that stuff and then this is a message again to the smart contract so finally this web app after receiving the inputs from the admin sends that transaction basically by calling the smart contract such that the smart contract adds a space right in the storage it adds this account the the device account because the device accounts only allowed device accounts can call the contract Thank you. yes salam it's it's exactly that 
again, you know, you can all just do it with web app only if you are, but it, you are building web app and, and mobile app and really make it for now, just make it even a code, even if you don't build mobile app, but you are building a web app that is uh, the admin is using the mo a, a web D app, let's call it a web D app. The admin uses to add to the smart contract an account and some uh, parameters and the mobile D app, the employee will will send basically a transaction um, uh, of their basically that transaction contains their GPS coordinate. Uh, because uh, Amal, because the when the admin adds that account, it adds it basically specifies a geographic coordinate. Let's imagine it says the location is between the latitude is between this and that longitude is between this and that and then when now a device sends then basically what happens is that it can compute is the this the longitude within the range that's allowed is latitude within the range that's allowed if so then verification location happens is is it clear Amal? it is basically a parameter that uh, the range is defined the employer basically is sent, is adding the re, the location range into the smart contract and the employee is sending the location the device so whenever we say employee we are really talking about the mobile d app the device that's sending the location does that make sense amal okay so now let's go to binium and again, Biniam, just because the part that Biniam was talking is more from the foundational sense about how storage happen. I mean, how basically the, the EVM is doing, as well as also how things are stored. Where are they stored? That. So go on, Biniam. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, Biniam, uh, while he's, okay, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you back? Yeah, uh, I think my screen's up, can you see? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so, uh, with interest of time, uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go straight to my questions. Basically, well, what I was trying to understand was these three questions, that is, how is data being stored in the blockchain? How are accounts kept track of? And how is the balance of accounts determined at any point in time? Because uh, they are uh, required uh, if the transactions are going to be uh, verified, uh, we need to know exactly what every account, uh, uh, what every account's balance is at any point in time. So. Uh, I, was I was trying to go through different resources to find exactly how these things work. Uh, most of them were just giving me a smaller picture of the whole picture, so uh, I couldn't exactly be sure whether what I uh, tried to piece together is correct or not. So uh, basically, uh, you already know the states, the blockchain and the basic concepts, but uh, in the end, what I have come to understand is that uh, uh, the blockchain is like uh, a big record uh, of, uh, uh, you know, the blocks where, where each block contains like the, uh, the uh, each block contains the transaction uh, state and uh, receipt uh, uh, tra tracking tracks in the form of like a Merkle tree like this. And each Merkle tree is uh, stores like the information like uh, the transactions that has taken at, uh, at that point and uh, those transactions will change uh, the account's state and that will also be recorded in another Merkle tree which will be uh, the state tree and uh, yeah I think that's how they are generally kept track of but why what I couldn't understand is exactly how, uh, for example, let's say this is this right here is the last uh, or the current block right now. And so when a person uh, 
same uh, to transaction, for example, from say a person called uh, Abel to like Salam, uh, how will the blockchain or the EVM determine uh, the current balance of Salam as well as uh, Abel? And how will it update the this Merkel tree? Uh, exactly. That was so, my question. So, yeah. So let, let me answer that one. And so you have to know okay. the difference, for example, between Bitcoin and other second generation yeah. blockchains is that Bitcoin doesn't have what you call account. State. Right? right. No, no, yeah. account. While ethereum they have account basically what it really means is that there is a space a storage that basically every time you create an account it basically occupies a, a storage and that storage is just like what you have in algorand it's basically it's a dictionary it's basically a big dictionary you know if you know level dm or any other uh, databases it's like that it's basically just yeah. it's a, a key and value you know, um, kind of big, big, big stuff. And each key is, I think, 32 byte. Each value is also 32 byte. Um, and so basically within that, it can store anything. So, of course, there are two, three things that it will store. And then you have to also distinguish between a block and the storage, right? So a block is basically only nice. stores the hashes, the hashes of it. So blocks are very light objects, right? They don't store, they're basically con are specified. Merkle tree is important because now you specified uh, correctly that there are these three, the state, the state, uh, okay. Let's... So yeah, exactly that. So that basically means the state basically is exactly what you are now if you are now moving transaction from one account to another account that is what is updated the state is changed so that's called the state so every every transaction one single transaction changes the state okay because at that okay. state at the previous state let's imagine in that the whole blockchain there are only three accounts okay and then in that three account, okay. one account has 100 and the two accounts are zero because they were just created. That is the first state. Second state is that when the one with 100 Ether transfers 50 Ether to the second account. Now, the second state is the first state was 100, 0, 0, right? The second state is 50, 50, 0. So that's why every transaction basically changes the state. And that is stored again as what? As key value pair. And that key value pair is that the amount of ether one has is basically is called amount. In that big dictionary, the amount is changed. The value of that, so kind of coordinate system, right? The coordinate system is defined of a single account is defined by four or five uh, keys and values and the one of the key is called amount and that amount is changed the rest is not changing in that kind of transaction now okay, may, of course may I, I add okay, okay go on yeah yeah uh, i think you said something interesting earlier uh, uh, you mentioned that the blocks in the storage are separate things that's i think where i was uh, a bit uh, confused uh, i was yeah. all I, I thought the only thing the blockchain contains was just the blocks and everything was stored inside the blocks so the uh, exactly. uh, how are they why connected you, why, why you need Merkle trees exactly for that why do you need Merkle tree because you 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 want to okay. get every single thing into a hash into one hash so that basically the hash is basically the tells you every the state of the storage right so uh, that that block contains basically the entire because that's why you have these Merkle trees going up and just becoming one um so and then at the end you really have of course because you know if you have to think it's 253 256 bits you would use for the key and 256 for the value so that means you can store basically 10 to 6 26 
byte, uh, petabytes with the number of keys and whatever combination. So that means the storage is really oh. unlimited, infinite, right? So that's why oh. that the the kind of the hash is the, the real, the only thing you store. And now at that particular, if you want to verify that at that particular block, the states, that's why you can, you can, you can prove because at the end is basically all the states, they must now be combined back, back, back to form just that hash. If, if you now want to change the state at that block, you wanted to change it at wherever it, you know, the state of it, it would basically disqualify, right? So that's what's the blockchain concept. Okay, so uh, from the you know, within the storage, uh, uh, just I'm trying just to make things a bit more clearer. Within the storage, how are exactly data stored in? What kind of data is stored? For example, is the uh, uh, is the data stored like accounts in their uh, yeah earnings or their balances? Is yeah. that what so the storage depending, contains? Depending on the account depending on the account. So if the account is uh, an external one, you only have basically, let's say four keys. And that key is defined exactly the nuance, the balance, the code hash, blah, blah. And that is the, the storage is, has all of your transactions. The basically the receipts is another thing and the log basically, right? So that, yeah. that part is stored accordingly, again, depending on the account. So now, like if it is a smart contract, the code hash will be, okay, of so, course. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so uh, just one thing remaining. Uh, so uh, now I understand that the storage contains accounts uh, with uh, and uh, their values. If it's a uh, contract, it's going to contain code and other uh, values. If it's uh, an external account, it contains uh, balances as well as uh, other information. Um, and then uh, now, associated receipts uh, that means uh, transactions okay they are also part, okay. they are so also now? basically they are also merkel trees right so all of them then they become also another merkel tree no actually no it's not it's a uh, bloom um, they are kind of actually instead of that it's actually a hash that really keeps things uh, things called bloom filter so the actually receipts are stored receipts and logs Logs means whatever in a, whatever you're writing, especially if it's smart contract account, it's writing logs, and those logs are basically stored in the logs in the Bloom uh, filter. And so you can read also what is Bloom filter. It's you know it's a type another of database uh, how you store things, and they are also associated again within that account. It's only the hash at every state. It's the hash that is stored, but they are then stored. You can store that's why you can store them externally some of you know like things that's why you could use ipfs to store some things you know it doesn't matter the storage of the structure you can actually choose where to store something right because storage is expensive okay. so some things you can actually okay. choose so, to store it uh, sorry can i just uh, ask one yeah. more question Okay, so uh, now I understand exactly where everything is being stored. Uh, one thing that's missing is uh, how are they connected? For example, uh, when a person tries to send uh, like a $100 or something to another person, uh, where exactly do the EVM first go? Does it go to the, like the blockchain? If so, does it start yeah. from the last block and traverse back? And if that's what it's doing, what will it be looking for in the block? If the account uh, information is already stored inside the storage, why can't it just go straight to the storage and see the account and uh, uh, make the deduction or the transaction and then record the transaction inside the block? I'm not sure if I'm so, making any sense. I, I think you are. So now the state is being changed. The storage is basically being changed and it's transactions being stored, right? So ultimately still the amount of the person at the current state is known. Now, if you wanna go back and recompute what the person had at a certain block, you basically, you know, you, you basically redo, undo those based on the transaction history, you subtract, add whatever, and you arrive to that point. And then the, 
oh. that transaction state. You you recreate the transaction state, and then you can check verify. Because ultimately, all you care is that the 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 kind of the uh, the the last tree in the Merkle tree is all you care. It's what you call data. You know, the rest is basically just for simply, you know, for a, a way of like recording things and really storing the block a small thing, right? And also for verification. But ultimately what you want to, what you need is to recreate the last pieces, the legs of the, the, like the storage or the leaves. So you can recreate based on the story, you can recreate back. And when you recreate back, you know, it's basically only verification you can do if you go to the previous block. Of course, in the next block, the state is changed and there are, of course, a way of proof of work or whatever. It basically proves it and then becomes a block. Once it becomes a block, you trust it in some way. But if now you want to download it, like you want to be a node, you, of course, need to verify, right? And when you verify, you're basically, the, the code needs to recreate each of the states and verify that at that storage, at that block, the state is correct. You can make it. If not, then you know. Then um, you reject that block because ultimately the, the, it's the block that you are checking. Is this block a correct block? And how do you know the correct if it's a correct block or not? From the state at that point, you go back, you construct the whole Merkle tree and its hash, and then you say like, okay, is the hash of the Merkle tree is the same as what is stored in the in the block? Yes or no? If it's yes, great. You 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 verified it. Does that make sense, Binyam? Or Binyam left? Okay, Binyam probably left. So, but was that clear and useful? I want to also hear, did you now, now let's just ask Meron if Meron is still there. How are your dots and the pieces, the relationships? They're, they're better, I think. Uh, a lot of the discussion has kind of brought some clarity to what we're going to do in connecting the dots so have you now got new dots and uh, new relationships formed between with, within the dots you had already and then the dots that you have acquired yes most definitely great what about others does anyone want to give feedback was this useful or what would have been useful if i were just basically showing you how for loops are done in, in in solidity code or how you know going through one one smart contract which one would you have told you you would get more dense information to me i would say going through one solidity uh, program okay that's why I said this was really good. Anyone else? Daisy? Yeah, I think this was really good because um, at least you're able to join the dots just off of different people's perspectives so it can fit into me you also. Know, I think this was good. I really but don't have enough content to like compare to see going through yeah. just a singular script. But now if you go now to to look at you know one smart contract. Sorry. Would you I'm sorry, Yabibal, I think you're breaking. I, I was, yeah, uh, I think because I'm connected through my phone and someone was calling. Uh, let's just actually do this, the one that I, one of them that I gave you. Um, So where is the smart contract? Let's imagine. Okay, so here is the smart contract. So 
if now based on the discussion we have either this one so would you be able to now understand it better these things or not would it would it help our discussion now to look to i mean i think if i have the other one it's better so for example this one so if you now to look at this code yeah i'm not very sure if you're sharing sense? your screen okay it's not can't share sorry an error occurred uh, i don't understand why errors are occurred what about now i mean yeah it's up okay so now they see if you now to look before the tutorial this code versus now does it make sense which one is do you have a better sense of what you are looking into or not yeah i think going back with the knowledge from the discussion i can especially when martin was breaking down um his code process yeah okay so it's all about really reading code if you read code then you you can and then if you know what this address is and this one and if you don't know what how to make that one and i think there are like for example you know this one i i, I told you i gave you this is the number betting game and you should be able to really um so this one like go to the smart contract for example this one you know you should be able to just be able to read this and understand what it's doing okay the contract is this this is the constructor and the functions and then stuff like that and so okay what's the kill what is doing what is it setting here you know where is it setting it's it's not in the storage but this is like defining so you, you would be able to of course go back and um understand more but i think for me for example this is basically a very good place to start right if you if you, anything you don't understand for example functions you don't understand then i'm sure like there is somewhere functions And then you go there and you basically there are several ways to return outputs from a function and you know basically you can you can see what you can do from functions you know it's pure public what does it mean pure public um and you learn about it basically and what you, you can define right so all the time of course this is just a new you know any code even a simpler code to understand but if you go if you have that confidence now you can go here and if you don't understand enum okay what it's trying to do okay i'm just going to go to here and then i will just go here and enum and i will read more and i can read more actually of course from um by also searching what enum is but ultimately to write a good code you basically should be able to understand all of this and then the second layer of understanding of course when you define there are modifiers right um and in those modifiers sometimes it is payable that means this one is actually can receive that what it really means is it can receive ether otherwise if it's not payable the function it cannot receive um, a value or ether and then you know what all of these things are what is private and whatever i think you that's what i imagine is that if you are confident you can learn them quickly because just you know it's like python or uh, whatever code it just needs of course to to look into it and and one day we really have to understand the types how you define an array how you define for example if you look at the like where is that i don't know where it was so for example here uh, this is a delegation call yeah i think it's from the here no it's, where is the number yeah so this one for example um it's you know you then can understand um you know what this is what is the structure earlier what's um you know martin was also defining for longitude and latitude thing and then you know these are functions you know you can basically learn and exactly what i was saying 
you know, mapping is that basically if you have a player, which is in this case a structure, and then an address, which is basically an array, then you can define an array, each of the its array to a player that's basically to be able to store multiple people or multiple things. In that case, you can associate them through mapping, and then you know you can use that. And and so this basically defines. So ultimately, it's really to go through, understand whatever you don't need, you just check, but you will basically get the hang of it. And then after that, you go to the second level called like, okay, now how how can I minimize computation, and then how can I be secure? And that is you know of course it takes time, but it ultimately it's the fun if you have a clear understanding of what you do and how things are related what are the dots and how are they related reading this and writing this is basically just not a big problem because you are in any way if you know one programming language learning another programming language must be should be easy okay um great Is the wallet integration going to be done on a mobile app? Will MetaMask pop up on a mobile app as it does on a browser? It does. It does on a mobile app as well. But let's imagine that one, you may also find a solution that doesn't, you know, sure. We want to really make it automated as possible, right? So not the human accepts a transaction. So the mobile app, should have its own let's say wallet in principle that basically you don't need it approves itself um instead of but in the web app is probably most likely what you need that connection but the mobile app in principle should be seamless that means it's it's not because it's not sending let's say it's not sending ether it's sending it's not transaction on ether of course it costs every transaction costs that means it's spending but it's not you know it's really sending location so in, i would expect the mobile app to not pop up so that means it kind of it's basically it must communicate and approve itself in principle and there should be it should be possible does that make sense idea So refunding is yeah gonna be in the contract. Ultimately, the condition is saying like okay, if the within the period time, if the person has been there in the agreed place, and it is always com the compliance, it's not out of compliance for let's say two or three times, then they basically receive a certain amount. That that amount is specified a priori as well. And now imagine if we create our own blockchain. What ultimately happens is that a cashier looks at the value that was transferred to this person. And then let's imagine that the stable coin, Ethiopian bird, or you know, Kenyan shilling, and basically it basically transfers that amount to that person's bank account easily, which is also the bank account, maybe can be even added as in as a metadata to the user, right? So you can even just actually use it. The compliance can be checked by smart contract, but when the smart compliance, uh, when smart contract transfers the net amount, let's say n amount, n stable coin Ethiopian bird, basically the person can go and get it if you know stable coin is accepted. Our stable coin is accepted. If our stable coin is not accepted, we basically the, there will be a cashier that exchanges that stable coin for the bird, and that is why, in principle, if you implement your own blockchain, it's easier for these kind of things. Awesome. And Binium, ultimately, are you, if you are here, ultimately have your question being answered. Okay, Binium may not be here, but hopefully that was useful. Great, yeah, that's fine. This is, there is a backend, I mean, by the back end, we're really referring in this case, the smart contract. There are two front ends in this case. One front end is the mobile app that is associated to the device or that's the employee. And then a wave app that's associated to the admin who is able to add accounts and associated data to the, to the um, smart contract. Okay. So it's basically two front end, one back end. 
yeah, great. So hopefully it was useful. Hopefully now going and checking a smart contract code uh, pro solidity is not gonna be an issue because you can read as there are so many and I've listed already some and understanding loops, understanding maps, understanding variables and is supposed to be, in my opinion, you should just be able to quickly do it. It's the concept that sometimes is hard. I hope the concept is elucidated. So happy Biniam, go on. Uh, just to make sure I uh, understand exactly how, what kind of application uh, we should be implementing. Can I, you know, uh, go through the, the my plans just in 10 seconds yeah. or so? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So from the front end side, it's my understanding that there are uh, two implementations. One is uh, back end in the web, I mean the web app in the mobile app. From yeah. the mobile app, I mean the web app, the employer will have the ability to create a list of employees and uh, attach specific requirements with each of these users like uh, geographic location, uh, time of payment, as well as the budget. And then uh, uh, the employer will send uh, this information back uh, to the backend, which is a smart contract. This smart contract will save uh, this information. And then when from the other front end side, which is the web application, the mobile application, the user will be able to load the requirement. That means exactly what geographic location no, no. is expected. No, let me to... stop you. Let me stop you. It doesn't care. It doesn't need to load anything. It basically just sends. It will okay. be activated and then it will just send because if it's if anyone sends to that smart contract, it will be rejected. So because the smart contract must have a check is this address in my list. Okay. And only yeah. proceeds later. Yeah, the, the 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 part actually I was I added it because if the user wanted to know exactly where he should be uh, going, that's, going, but but that's that, not refund. That basically becomes uh, kind of in, you know another type of app, right? That's basically it's not only does the refund, but also instructs where the person should go. So that's basically you are now trying to implement some kind of Uber or ride or, you know, um, uh, Bolt, which basically okay. uh, instructs, for example, a car to go to X address. And, okay. and so now if we want to implement this, exactly this taxi thing, taxi ride sharing, that is what you would do. But we, at this moment, we really kind of the user and the employee and employers agreed on their okay. own where to go. Like, you know, they, they are going for a conference X that happened on another system. And then they know exactly where they go, which hotel they stay. And the user probably even uh, gave the location they will be going, especially which hotel they are staying, whatever, to the admin. Now the admin agrees on that. That happened, you know, a priori. And then the admin active adds that person, that person's um, thing from this day to that day in a location range of this. And then, then the, that person must download, of course, a mobile app. And then, of course, of course, they had an account. Yeah, they had an account. Uh, I'm just going to mute you. That's why. Okay. That's why. Can you mute? Okay, go on, Abu. Okay, so. Um, so that's basically what it do. So, uh, okay. In that case, I'm just going to take out that part. Uh, my thought was that uh, the communication uh, was also supposed to be included in the this project implementation. But if we yeah. are assuming that... You only assume uh, yeah. the address is already uh, known and the person uh, downloads the mobile app and associates mm -hmm. basically just, you know, associates their account and that's it. And then from that on, when they start pinging, if the their account is not added, nothing happens. But if their account is added, then this starts counting, right? The okay. the smart contracts start adding. So if the person, if the employee, a priori downloads the mobile app and sends, nothing happens. So mm -hmm. the the admin must start it. That's what's called starting. The admin enables starting means in this case the admin immediately adds as soon as the admin adds the account. 
and associated data, then from that on, the, the device become known to be part of the system. Okay. So once uh, this list, uh, that means uh, users in their specific requirements are uploaded to the backend uh, storage, which is uh, uh, the smart contract storage, yeah. uh, they will be started to uh, track it. That means uh, uh, once they reach uh, their location, uh, their yeah. device will be triggered at random time, uh, yeah. requesting them to... Even before that, they can, uh, they can do that, right? But you had, that's why you had a time limit, the time from which yeah. time on it's actually really that you start checking compliance. Yeah. Okay, so uh, starting from the trigger and the triggering time, they will be they will start to be tracked then. Yeah. Uh, the users will be requested to uh, submit their geographic location uh, randomly. That means the application- yeah, You, you specify them. again, you know, that's, that's the mobile app that is doing that. So in the mobile app, you yeah. do some logic and basically that's it. So mm -hmm. to not, because the mobile app must have, you know, must try to minimize the amount of transaction it does because it's costing it. So it's in the design of the front end in the mobile app that you actually have to specify how often, how random, whatever. So that's the logic of the mobile app because the smart contract can receive at any time, okay. like any message. So uh, let's say uh, three times at random uh, yeah. times. Uh, and then uh, at this moment, the user actually needs to be uh, requested to very uh, approve sending of the GPS to make sure uh, the user is actually the one sending it and not just leaving the phone somewhere. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's again that's again the smart contract can check basically uh, another variable called was this the same location or within as before kind of that's another variable because it doesn't have the it doesn't store the previous reading it can only store some global variable right the global variable could just say some kind of like okay the past only reading and then you can do something like some kind of computation you have to think of this is not the you know you don't have the usual coding where you can store in a database you can store in a database of course in an external iface um that is possible but yeah it's a complex thing if you want to store all the history and all the transaction, of course, if you want to read it also from the receipt, because every transaction has a receipt, it has a log. You could read it from the log, whatever, but you have to know some things cost more. Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, once the GPS uh, is sent to the smart contract, it will refer the requirements that has been set by the employer and check yeah. if the user is actually okay. where he or she is supposed to be. Then, uh, then up basically it updates true or false, compliance true or false. That's it. Exactly. So once it updates that variable, it will just either approve the funding or just refund it back to the employer yeah. if it fails. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. I think yeah. I got it. Hopefully it's also clear for everyone. And I think, you know, make it simpler. Don't try to complicate it. Um, implement the simplest, the most, for example, only one time thing you know, whatever. So don't, don't over complicate it because you don't have time. You can't complete, once you do this, a very simple one, you can make lots of complex complications. So, you know, you can make it more complex as you go on. But for now, focus only on a very simpler use case, which is basically one time only, and only you, you keep one variable called compliant or not, um, you know, stuff like that. So just don't try to too much but if you can of course you know but at first create the simplest one test it and then you can make it complex if you have time with that we are way over time but i hope that was useful and because especially those of you who wants to be um into you know get job in web3 what i really really re remind you is that you must understand this the security analysis it's, creating one thing only is not sufficient but you must understand the security the complexity and the computation you know which which ones like private versus you know for example public whatever you know how they are so you must check and you really it's exciting you can also just sometimes if you have confusion you can write to me and we can talk and um, hopefully this is good and you write everything you, you keep a note so that you it, it simplifies also your report writing.
Okay, with that, happy coding. Ciao, everyone.